So in regards to space and screen size, you need to decide how big you're really wanting to go. If you want a large image and screen, you need to be sure that your projector has enough physical space to allow the lens to throw the image so that it can expand enough to fill the actual size and dimensions of the screen. The projector also must have a clear line of sight to the entire surface area, otherwise you'll end up with shadows casting onto your screen making black spots. Uh, this is why most projectors are mounted in high places, so you, you're not going to be conflicting with anything that's moving around in the room. There are multiple types of projectors and lenses that can help you resolve these issues if you have to get it further or closer to the actual screen given where you need to mount or put place the projector in the room. When choosing a screen size and a projector, you need to establish what size is best suited for the content that you're producing or planning to put on the screen. There are various standards of sizes for screens for different applications. They're commonly described by the horizontal to vertical ratio, commonly known as an aspect ratio, which I'm sure you've heard before. Although there are many types, most fall into generally the 16-9 and 4-3 ratio. Those are the two most common. For example, a surface that is 8 feet wide and 6 feet tall, and another surface that is 12 feet wide and 9 feet tall, they both fall into the same ratio category, given that the root dimensions of the screen both are 4-3, a 4-3 ratio. Regardless of their size, the ratio is the same, meaning that the same content measured to 4-3 will completely fill both surfaces. 4-3 has been a long favored ratio and the standard for television for a long time. Still widely used and uh, a lot of people use it in business settings given that a lot of their software is, is designed for that ratio. So it's still, still out there. Most modern media is in 16-9, commonly referred to as widescreen. TVs, computer screens and even smartphones are all generally conforming to this ratio. And as you can see, your phone is much smaller than your TV but the display will fill the same and in the same ratio as your TV all the same. Okay, so what, what I've done here with this projector, the, the image that I'm sending to the projector right now is in a 4-3 four three, four three ratio. And the projector is set to 4-3 and the screen itself, the physical screen, is a 4-3 ratio as well. Um, so if you were in a position where you needed to change this or let's say your content was in 16-9 and you were sending it to your projector and it would appear stretched because it's filling a 4-3 space in 16-9, so it's taking the original signal and expanding it. I'll show you just what I mean in, in reverse. So I'm going to change the aspect ratio from 4-3 to 16-9, and you're going to notice that the image is not going to look correct. So now the image looks stretched, and you have these black bars on the top and bottom. So I've now converted the signal of this projector to be to a 16-9 ratio. So if we were using a screen, it was 16.9, the actual dimensions smaller, like the size, the size of this phone more or less, <laughs> given its ratio, it would look good. It would be focused, it would be what it's supposed to be. So one of the last things that you need to know about, again, focusing your projector and having, having the space to do so is you got to keep in mind what's happening in the room. Is there going to be people walking around? Because as you can see, if someone walks in front of the projector, that's a little distracting, which is why, like I said earlier, that most people will mount your projector up on, onto the ceiling or in a high location so that you're not competing with the, the line of sight of the projector. Hopefully this information has been helpful for you to get started with your projector and getting to know what you're going to need and the problems that you'll encounter.